is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Good morning, Ira. How are you doing, my friend? You doing well? Good? I'm doing. I'm doing good after a win. I'm not doing good because I was going to fly to Brooklyn today, and then an Easter arrived. So uh, oh, I very well might be wind up covering tomorrow's game from home, sort of uh, shades of recent seasons. But the one thing I know about New York when they get flooding, getting around in that city oh, yeah. and using the subways. So I, I might be here on the quote unquote set tomorrow with Clay Ferraro with our Pallet Rack City inside the Paint Report. Um, but plenty of juicy bits to talk about. One, obviously, going to Brooklyn and just facing the Nets and everything that's going on with them, from Kyrie being out to James Harden not able to get to the foul line and maybe put on a couple of pounds there also. So interesting Nets stories and interesting Heat stories, including, oh, and again, it, it's funny. You and I, this must be decades already, talking about the Heat's lack of a backup point guard and I get yelled at by the Heat. And yet those moments come through, and certainly you saw the game Saturday between takes on the UM game. Not I, thought about you, I thought about you the entire game. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, as I'm sure Pat Riley did as well. You know, and they're not budging. They are they are uh, just about the luxury tax. They don't want to make a move yet. They don't want to panic. I did raise in my ask, Ira, at sunsentinel.com this morning, the John Wall possibilities, because, yes, it's insane, Big O. He is due $80 million over the next two seasons from the Rockets but he's not playing at all. So at some point, if you're a player and you want to play, you have to reach that buyout. And I know that some fans have sort of pushed back at me. John Wall hasn't been the same player. He hasn't played. His ego is too big. He wants to start. If you have Oladipo, you He'd fine. be the greatest backup point guard in yes. Heat history, dude. Yes. Come on. <laughs> and, and, for those, and for those who are saying, well, what about when Oladipo comes back? You know what? He'll be the greatest backup shooting guard, you know, right, that you can right. have. The more right. talent, the better. John Wall was very good when he played at the start of last season for the Rockets. I'm intrigued by that at a minimal price. Folks, the Heat ain't going out and paying his $40 million salary. Oh, no, no one is. So it's just, it, it's that who winks, you know, who blinks first game between the Rockets and Wall. How much does he have to get back of that $80 million? We saw Blake Griffin, the same thing, have two years left last year with the Pistons. He gave back enough of a chunk. They let him go to Brooklyn. The Pistons are happier. They're paying less money. Don't have an old guy in their roster. The Nets are happier. They're having a contributing older player. I see that playing out the same way with John Wall. He spends all of his summers here. He works down, works out with Heat players in the offseason. It would be a natural fit. And the one thing you know, matter of fact, this is almost the previous segment you were talking about culture. The Heat culture will make it work. That John Wall going to oh, yeah. four or five other places, you might go, uh-oh, here we go again. That doesn't happen with the Heat. They bring in these guys in these situations, and they make it work. Well, remember, it's 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 half and half. It's I think the player also is excited mm -hmm. to be yes. able to join a place that has structure, because you know when when once you've been in other places and you've noticed what a disaster it is, yes. and it's unorganized, and it's just not the same. Sometimes these players they love actually structure. They they actually like the discipline. At times, the guys that don't like the discipline, those kind of those kind of like the white sides, those aren't the guys you want in your organization right. anyways. Right. So it, half of them, I think half of those guys that join the heat organization, they feel re-energized because they're like, holy shit, dude, I don't have to carry the load for everything and try to straighten this guy out and carry this guy and then do this. And, you know, the policing is done for me already. Everybody is in line. You accept right. your role. As long exactly. as you, Pat Riley That's will right. tell you it's this, Eric Spolter will tell you it's this, are you yep. in or are you out? And you know what? If you want to be more, your Hassan Whiteside analogy is perfect there, or think you could be something else. We've seen all these Heat players leave and disappear. So right. yeah, I think, I think that would be intriguing. Look, this is not panic time or anything. It's three games in. It's so early. Matter of fact, oh, it's crazy. When you look at who the Heat have played, they haven't played a real team in this aspect. They played the Bucks in the opener with no Brooke Lopez, no right. Drew Holiday, no Bobby Portis. They go to Indiana, no TJ Warren, no Karis LeVert. They come home last night, no Jonathan Isaac, no Michael Carter-Williams, no Markel Fultz for the Magic. And, of course, they're going up to Brooklyn, no Kyrie Irving. Now, I know the Heat didn't have Kyle Lowry one game also, but just get the wins now. You'll figure out who you are and who they are later. Just get the Ws. And like I told you this last week, when we did our last Accurate Pembroke Pines report, 
You cannot lose to the Magic. You cannot lose to the Pistons. You cannot lose to the Cavaliers because everyone else in the East is good. Washington is good. Chicago is good. Charlotte is good. You're going to have 12 teams competing for playoff spots. You've got to do what you did last night. Thankfully, no Evan Fournier and Nikola Vucevic to get in the way and screw things up, like always. But you got to get the ones you can get. And you know what? Tomorrow in Brooklyn is gettable also. The Nets have been very uneven to start the season. Yeah. And by the way, just to go back to have a little fun with uh, this, the – the John Wall scenario, just to throw sure. it out to Heat fans, uh, they can both be point guards, also backup point guards, because Spo will be able to play with it down the stretch. If I need more of a defensive point guard at that moment, I use right. Oladipo. If I need more of an offensive point guard at that moment, I use John Wall. You know what I'm saying? So in a way, it also, you know, I know I'm playing fantasy sports right now. Sure. That's one, we need Oladipo to get healthy and, and stay healthy. And two, right. We actually need this whole wall situation to happen. But if it does, it gives Spo a lot of flexibility, too, that he probably doesn't have with either guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but and oh, I'm going to give you one, give you you one guys, other aspect of this. Come the buyout deadline, which is around March 1st, you have to be waived by your previous team. You better be in a good position so someone wants to go there. And the example, Big O, I would offer to you is last season. Blake oh, I, thought Griffin Desha- I thought it was Deshaun Watson. Oh, it's similar. After, I mean, it all, this, after all this, he may not even want to come to the no, Dolphins he may go. anymore. You know what? Carolina might still make the playoffs. I'd rather go over there. Just yeah. like last year at the buyout deadline, Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge said, hmm, a Heat team that might go out in the first round or a Nets team that can contend for a title. So you have to position yourself early to make yourself attractive, sort of the opposite of where the Dolphins are now. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 rough, man. Uh, tonight, I mean, last night, uh, let me ask you something. Sure. Duncan Robinson, first three games, field goal percentage, 36%, uh, three point percentage, 32%, free throws, 66%. I know it's only three games, but he's not shooting very well. No, and What's you know what? He started off poorly last season. Remember, we were all panicked. He's under 42%. He had that great 46, 48% year That's the right, year he before. Did. He'll come around. He does, you know, like Duncan Robinson told me one thing. He says, look, I shoot three of 10 on threes and I've had a terrible night. I shoot five of 10 on threes. I've had a great night early in the season. The sample size is so small that if he goes out, oh, and has a six of eight tomorrow in Brooklyn, everything changed. The shooting percentage changes. The three point percentage changes. It's still early. And here's the other part of that gravity. Opponents still know where Duncan Robinson is every single minute of the game. They're not playing off of him. That's letting Jimmy play much more in the post. And it's letting, like, you you wanted and you're seeing Bam Adebayo play much more in the post. So the fact that Duncan Robinson, honestly, two guys, that Duncan Robinson is out there with his gravity. And honestly, one of your favorites, Max Struess, is out there. And he now also has gravity. After people have seen him in the preseason and what he's done now, they're staying with him also. That's what spacing is about. Spacing is not about made shots. It's about a reputation. It's about don't leave P.J. Tucker open in the corner. He's been doing this for over a decade. That's what the Heat have now is they have people you're respecting. What they don't have necessarily with the Markeith Morris is that. So what does Spo do? He brings them into the mid-range. He says, look, let's not keep chucking them up there. No one's guarding it out there. But in the mid-range, you're a factor, and he was really good in that role yesterday against the Magic. Uh, I I thought, you know, I really like what I've seen from Tyler overall. A nice, complete game last night. Yes. And I I, I, I just really – I don't know what it is. The light went on. I don't know. He has a kid now. You know, sometimes you do change a little bit when you have a child. I'm not saying everybody grows up, but – there is a tendency that there's a little extra desperation that's that sets in when you start to you know develop a family those of us that have a family you know what i'm talking about that you know that that heightened sense of alertness that like okay well wait a minute now my life is not about me anymore it's about somebody else now that i've got to put in front and i've got to make sure their lives are better i don't know what it is i don't know if he's you know come clean with you guys on it <sighs> But I just it, it just seems like it, it it seems like it's a more mature player out there right now. Oh, I'm gonna go another direction. I think it's having time off between seasons. And I'll give you an example you can relate to. 
Okay. It's one thing when you're doing a radio show at a professional soccer stadium and then boom, you're back in the bunker doing your radio show. It takes time to adjust. You can't just go from A to B like that. You have to say, we'll reset it up this way. We'll format it this way. Same thing with Tyler. He gets done with the playoffs. He was great in the 2020 playoffs. He beat the Boston Celtics. He had four weeks off and do it again, do it again, do it again. That's hard to do. He exhaled, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, the, the old namaste kind of thing. He just, he let it all out. He found his higher being. He needed that. He needed a break. Oh, how many times have you just been burnt out? You take that vacation, you take that exhale, you come back as a different, a more refreshed person. I think that more than the family, more than anything else, he needed his time off. A lot of these Heat players needed his time off. Eric Spolster spoke about this yesterday after the game. We asked him about Bam playing so much better, more forceful in the paint, more forceful on the boards. And he said, look, he had a summer. He didn't have a shoulder injury. He worked with the national team. He worked on his jab jumper a little bit. He had the time. You need an offseason. Everyone needs time to recharge. A lot of us didn't get that because of the pandemic. It's just been months and days and everything running together. I think that's the difference for Tyler. The kid finally exhaled. And now, don't take this the wrong way. He's inhaling something really good. All right, that's good. As long as it's not a I just you know it. mask, uh, a mask that some uh, former Dolphin offensive lineman used, and he, you know, he's he's going to be all right. Uh, so far, at two and one. Um, your thoughts on the bench play? Outside showing of time, hope, showing hope and showing signs of what it could be. Certainly, Tyler's we spoke about is very much stepped up. Man, Dwayne Dedman is a heat center, isn't he? He just has yeah. that. Don't, yeah. don't, don't F with me. I'll put you in your place. I'm going to use my fouls. I'm going to use my T's. I'm going to use my flagrant. He is that hung with twice yesterday. The ball was on the floor. And yep. it reminded me of football players going after the fumble. They don't care who got the ball first. They care who winds up with the ball last. That's what he is. I can imagine the body parts he was grabbing at the bottom of that scrum. You got to love the guy for what he is and who he is. And last night, to me, was so heartening, Big O, about Markeith Morris, that he came out, he hit his first five shots, he was a factor. He has to be a factor. The big three of the bench is Deadman, Hero, and Morris. If you get something out of them, your quality ain't deep. Max Struess again had some of his moments. You yeah. like to see that also. As we wait for Victor Oladipo, this bench can be good without Victor, this bench potentially can be great with Victor, so you're buying time to a degree but I've seen enough from each of those three reserves of which I had questions about all of them going into camp and going into the season. So, so far, so good yet. All of that said, think about how the equation changes when Kyle Lowry's not in there. The game Vincent doesn't play last night. All of a sudden is starting in the game in Indy. So again, they have good backup on the wing. Tyler hero could be a shooting guard, even a small forward. He could play bigger. They have good backup in the power swing rotation because Markeith could be a three. Markeith could be a four. They have good backup at center because you have Dwayne Dedman. But a point guard, it just all goes sideways. It goes back to what we started this segment with, that there's not an easy transition. Look, I'm not saying I want the Heat to say Jimmy Butler's out, but I can deal with Tyler Hero score starting. I don't want to hear that P.J. Tucker is out. But I'll deal with Markeith Morris starting. I know it's a different approach when Bam Adebayo is out. But Dwayne Dedman's been an NBA starting center during his career. But when Kyle Lowry's out, and he will be again, oh, he's 35 years old. Yeah. There's just not an answer. I just, I just don't know what direction they go. Do they start Tyler? Do they tell Jimmy from the outset, you're the ball handler? Is there something else? Marcus Garrett's not ready. I know Jeff Teague's a minus player. I'm not saying he isn't. But I know when you put a veteran player out there, it coalesces a lot better than forcing Gabe Vincent, mostly a spot-up shooter, to be a point guard. Really weird. I respect the hell out of Pat Riley and his roster building and Andy Ellisberg and Adam Simon, you know, and, and down the line, Eric Amsler and all their other scouts. I just don't get this point guard thing. It, it's, oh, it, it's like you. It's an innate position. When you go to the Senior Bowl and you see the converted wide receivers becoming quarterbacks and how right. long it took Ryan Tannehill to finally find his inner quarterback, it took years because it's an innate position. I just don't get how they don't get that, that there's not a – even look at like an Ish Smith type of guy. He's been on 75 teams. Yeah. But he's, but he's helped all 75 teams. That's yeah. all I ask. Get me a guy who you can tell, look, 
You may not play at all this week if Kyle Lowry's healthy. But if he calls in with the flu, bad COVID test, something like that, you're going to be our starter. There are guys like that. The luxury tax makes it harder. It still is doable. I would like to see something sooner rather than later. Maybe John Wall later. Maybe a trade later. They always do something at the deadline. But right now, like I'm saying, oh, when you ask about the depth, I can back up every single box except for one. Walk us through this because obviously we're not as smart as you in knowing all the rules. Uh, but KZ Akpala is basically dead space on this Correct. team. But the, he has guarantees, unfortunately, For the that rest of the, the season, Heat are tied yes. to. So there's no way of getting out of that contract, uh, shipping it out somewhere to. Oh, open you can. Up oh, oh, absolutely. Then, and then going, try to filter, like, you know, yes. remember two years ago when the Dolphins were picking on everybody's practice squads? Sure. Well, the Heat should use that spot to try to keep finding a damn point guard somewhere. No, and, and I agree with that, but there's a cost. And the cost so far shown in similar salary dumps has been cash and a future second-round pick. The Heat don't have a lot of future second-round picks. Depending on how the NBA tampering investigation, which is never-ending, goes. And they've spent three on this kid already. Right, right. they it. might lose another one. They can do this. They can trade him into a team that has room under the cap, maybe even under the salary floor like Oklahoma City, and attach a few million dollars. You get up to $5 million a year to send out in trades, and they couldn't make it work that way. You know that Oklahoma City holds up the heat for everything. They held him up for the draft choice. They held him up when they traded Myers Leonard to unload him last year. They held him up that they want to make them pay to unlock the lottery-protected pick. But Oklahoma City right now is below the salary floor. So basically, if they don't pay a player, they have to just give the money to the rest of their roster. So I do think that is doable and that he can talk their way into it. But right now, Sam Presti's playing hardball because his team's not looking to win. So it doesn't matter to yeah. him. But that, that is, to me, the best avenue right there. Unless, and then please, please, I'm not saying this, you convince UD to walk away and you tell him, you know what, UD? We're going to have UD night early. We're going to have it on December 13th. It's going to be spectacular. And then after that, you're going to announce that this is the moment you've been waiting for, back with fans in the crowd, after COVID, a full arena, to have your Dwayne Wade-like moment. And then the spot becomes available right away. That's not happening. But there are avenues to this roster. Oh, like we've been saying, they're only carrying 14 instead of 15 because of the luxury tax. But right. Udonis doesn't play. KZ can play. And for a while, Victor Oladipo won't play because of his quadriceps surgery. So you're really on that tight razor of only having maybe 11, if you don't think your saving is ready, maybe just 10 players available for you. That's a tightrope right now in this COVID climate. Yeah, I, I like your saving. I, I'd find minutes for him yes, one way I, or another. I would not let him go. You not know the what? first it, half to, to in, get him in, ready for the second half just in, in case somebody gets injured. In retrospect, if they could have signed him to the two-way contract, then they would have had oh. this roster spot. But let's face right. it, though. Matter of fact, you know, I'll have you be a GM. After those two games in Sacramento, you remember Summer League when he was like yeah. 30 and 18. Yeah. And he came to him and said, you know what? We're going to offer you a two-way contract. You're going to make $435,000 instead of one point seven, you know, instead of a million dollars. But another team offered a standard deal. The Heat were rock in a hard place. It's almost like right. he was almost too good for their good. Then they right. couldn't hide him anymore. The perfect world would have been Yurt Saban gets a second two-way, not Marcus Garrett. He goes to Sioux Falls, and then you have an extra roster spot. Maybe it's for Jeff Teague. Maybe it's for Wesley Matthews. Maybe it's for James Ennis. But you can get another contributor. But you know what? Sometimes your hand is forced also. And you know what? If Yurt Seven becomes the player that you and I think he might be, then you don't want to have that guy walk, and all of a sudden no. he, he becomes no. another team's Patrick Beverly. Yeah, no, definitely not. You, you definitely don't want – you know, something like that happening. All right, Ira, what are you working on on the South Florida Sun Sentinel so uh, our listeners can check you out, my friend? I uh, just posted a story about the crazy situation, how the Heat are flying into a storm because of the weather, but they're also flying into a storm in Brooklyn because of the Kyrie Irving thing, cannot play in New York by their mandates. And the James Harden thing, this new crackdown on players trying to draw fouls to get to the foul line, which is the story of James Harden's career. He was, I think, sixth last season in free throws attempted per game. He'll go into the Heat game 63rd in the league in free throws attempted per game. They're not buying his BS anymore. Again, and I watched this on NBA TV. Sam Mitchell was talking about it. If he drives to try to score and gets fouled, they'll call it. But if he's playing just to draw the foul, 
They're not calling it anymore, and they shouldn't call it anymore because that's not part of the sport. You're a huge soccer fan, Big O. You know how there's been a crackdown in the Premier League. If you're going to yes. flop just to get a yellow card or maybe a PK, they're not calling it, and they're going to give you the yellow card right. now. Right. Unlike some I South American it. leagues where flopping and Messi is still the thing. So the NBA is cracking down. So basically what they're telling James Harden is play basketball. If you play basketball, you'll get the whistle. And the contrast to that big O is Jimmy Butler right now is sixth in the NBA in free throws per game because he draws contact, because he goes through you and tries to score, because he doesn't flail 17 different limbs. No, in one no, no. no yes. He Why? seeks the contact. Yes, yes. He, he, like, like Eric Spolsch had a great line in Indy the other day. He says, every time Jimmy gets contact, it's like a mini car crash. And it sort of is like Dwayne Wade, you know, the fall 19 times, get up 20 kind of thing. So I sort of contrasted how Brooklyn has to deal with the absence of his star and his star no longer getting his way. So I think it'll be an interesting game tomorrow night for the Heat in Brooklyn. I'll be talking with Clay Ferraro in our Pallet Rock City inside the paint show tomorrow about that. So that's posted at sunsentinel.com. I'm going to have a story later in the day about how the Heat's reserves are coming through. But uh, interesting times. Again, three and one would feel a hell of a lot better than two and two. So oh, sort man. of a big game. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, you know, it always feels good because when you're going to Brooklyn and you're going to that arena, you've been to juniors, right? Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. The what? The, the now I don't know if you know this, but the juniors that's right by that arena is the only juniors that has cornbread, and that cornbread is the best cornbread on the planet. All right. I don't know if have you do you like cornbread? I do like cornbread. Uh, usually, when I go to juniors, I stay more on the Jewish kosher side of the menu. But I, if you're gonna I, I get, add a little Southern tilt, I can I can get into that. I, yeah. I, I get that. I totally understand. Okay, there's lots of great things on the juniors menu, but if you ever get to go again, try the cornbread. Okay, hey, I'm, I'm the cornbread. The cornbread. every time I go to a concert in there, I mm -hmm. always go to juniors to go have some food, and I gotta have a cornbread. Oh it is God. a Winderman Thanksgiving staple. I will keep that in mind. Thank you, Big O. All right, be good. Thank you, Ira. Appreciate you. Follow him on Twitter, by the way, at Ira. Heat beat for those of you that are listening on the podcast. More importantly, subscribe to the Sun Sentinel and support my man Iron, all the great journalists that are there on that newspaper. That is our Acura Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA report.